Hello once again, and Tony here with a review of Out of the Furnace, which was shown at the Sinistar Movie Theaters at Potsdam Platz. The film was directed by Scott Cooper. It was produced by Jennifer Davison Killerin, Leonardo DiCaprio, Ryan Kavanaugh, Ridley Scott, and Michael Costigan. It was written by Brad Inglesby and also by Scott Cooper himself. And it stars Christian Bale, Woody Harrelson, Casey Affleck, Forrest Whitaker, Willem Dafoe, Sam Shepard, Zoe Saldana, and Tom Bauer. Now, when first watching the trailers, I was kind of skeptical about it. Sure, the trailers I thought were very excellent all throughout, and they captured the spirit of what we're going to expect from this film. But a part of me actually was having my expectations very low, because I thought this was going to be another testosterone-laden action flick with men beating the crap out of each other, a la Fight Club, a la Never Back Down, a la Karate Kid, and every other type of film that you can name of on the top of your head. But after watching this film, I was pleasantly surprised and quite shocked, not to mention very teary-eyed. Now, story-wise, I have to say, it was pretty engaging. This basically tells the tale of a man in his well, mid-30s, early 30s, who works in a factory and simply has to put food on the table for his younger brother and his elderly and sickly father. Now, a lot of things happen, but they all just and tragically, there's not a lot of happy, happy, joy, joy events going along. Apparently, Russell's and Rodney's father passes away. Rodney participates in a lot of underground fights, mostly specializing in bare-knuckle brawling, headed by John Petty, who is the manager of these fights. And we also have the main antagonist of this film, who is a psychotic drug dealer all the way from New Jersey by the name of Harlan, who is basically a threat to that of Russell's, Rodney's, and even that of John Petty's lives. So yes, the story in this film definitely has a sense of tension and grit, and it's such a dark atmosphere all around. It basically captures what it really what it's really like living in the mountainous areas of the USA. There's a lot of crap going on, no doubt about that. There's racism, there's a lot of drug dealings going along. Basically, there's a lot of crap that happens day in and day out. And it's shown very viscerally throughout the film. There's Almost no good person, no completely bad guy whatsoever. Let's just say that they're pretty much people who are on the gray side of their morality. Yet there are also some that are that they're quite horrible. But that's life. People don't really know what's right or what's truly right, or what's truly wrong. They're pretty much on the standing on gray, so to say. And this film manages to tell its story very viscerally. It's as though that it manages to grab you by the scruff of the neck and just simply tell you, hey, listen up, boy. I'm going to tell you a story and you better listen up or else you're going to get what's coming to you, and you're not going to like it. That's how I definitely felt when watching this movie. I was like, it's as though that there was some rough person, some rough and tumble person just grabbing me by the scruff of the neck and just telling me that if I don't listen and listen good, I'm going to get it. That's the message I definitely got from this film, and I thought it managed to tell its story very well. Sure, at times, the writing can be a bit clunky and quite unfocused, but other than that, I thought the film 
overall, story-wise, was just very engaging, especially when it comes to the relationship between Rodney and Russell and the bond that they have as brothers and how much they care for each other and how much family means for Russell and everything else in between. I thought this movie, in terms of story, I thought was just great. Now, in terms of cinematography, this was basically shot by a Japanese cinematographer by the name of Masanobu Takayanagi. I definitely felt that he really knew what to do and how to shoot all of these mountainous areas, especially the few shots of the factory, which I definitely felt was very appropriate, hence the title, Out of the Furnace. Sure, it's not the most subtle title, but it definitely sets the mood of all the characters going through such very rough times, especially that of Russell, since all the characters in this film are basically of a very low class upbringing. And with that said, I definitely felt that the cinematography at times is very gritty, just like the story. And it was just very, very inviting as well. It was completely visceral. It doesn't really hold back on the blood and on the guts. It was just, wow. It was just visceral all throughout. Now the characters are extremely, extremely interesting. Our main hero, Russell, is neither a goody two-shoes, nor is he a bad guy. No. He's completely on the gray side of things. He knows that he's doing the right thing, especially for his family, but he gets himself caught in a lot of crap. He gets his ass sent to jail because of the hic of, a, of um, an accident occurring between another passenger from another vehicle. Thus, he ends up killing a very young boy and is sent to jail for a couple of years or so. Sure, this gentleman doesn't really make the best decisions in his life, but he truly cares for the people that, that are very important to him, his family. He cares for his brother. He cares for his elderly father. He cares for his uncle. He may not really be the best role model, but it's easy to say that this guy definitely cares for his family and he will fight for them no matter what it takes, no matter if he ends up breaking the law. If he breaks the law, then yes, he breaks the law, but he knows that he has to do it for his family. He knows that, yes, the law is there just to protect those in need, but he has his own brand of justice. He pretty much reminds me of all of these rebellious heroes of the 50s or during the time of James Dean, but he's not a pretty boy, I will say that. He's actually very rugged and very masculine, for lack of a better word. But still, his moral code may not always be that straight, but it's what he does, especially with the love of his family, that keeps him being the person that he is, and that makes him very great of a very very much a great character. Now his brother Rodney is another likable character as well. While Russell is very calm and very serious, Rodney is rambunctious. He is he's rampaging sometimes. He is a hothead, he's aggressive, but he can be very passionate when he has to be because he knows that he is fighting for his country. He does care for his brother as well. But he wants his brother to understand that, you know what? I'm a big guy now. I'm an adult. So whether you like it or not, I'm going to make sure that I'm doing good for this country. And I'm not going to disappoint. 
I definitely really love the presence of Rodney on screen and the relationship that both Russell and Rodney have as brothers. I thought it was just well done. Sure, it could have been a lot more expanded because we do see a couple of flashbacks in terms of a clip show, but other than that, I really wish that they could have fleshed out their relationship a lot more. But as they are, they're pretty good characters. They're not really the best in terms of moral code, but other than that, I definitely have to say that they're very fascinating. Now, their uncle is absolutely a great mentor, mostly to Russell, because he's pretty much the one who is pretty much the sane man of this journey of Russell's vendetta against Harlan. Let's face it, Harlan was also the one who killed Rodney, which I felt very, very sad. I was almost about to cry because Rodney is apparently the only family that Russell has, and I was just, whoa, whoa, what the hell? But still, their uncle I definitely felt was very wise and pretty much a great role model, mostly to Russell. Now, John Petty, he definitely kind of has a little bit of a minute role, but he definitely shows that at times he may be a greedy bastard. Sure, he looks to be like a greedy bastard, but he is pretty much one of those unscrupulous businessmen, but he does care for his job. He likes the job that he's doing. And he's also a great mentor to Rodney. He's almost like a good father figure to Rodney, especially in those bare knuckle brawls that he hosts. He may not be the best person to be around with, but he's definitely a good mentor when it comes to bare knuckle brawling. And oh my god, we have Harlan, the biggest bastard of, well, 2014 in terms of movies. He's pretty much one of the biggest bastards I have ever seen to simply walk the screen. One of them, the others being uh, Bill Sykes from Oliver, and to some extent, Alex from Clockwork Orange, and Prince Hans from Frozen. But these gents are absolutely nothing compared to Harlan's um, angry, grotesque, psychopathic, and deranged nature. And he's also quite the drug addict as well. He pretty much is a killing machine. Whether he uses a gun or his bare hands, you know for a fact that this is one person you do not want to fuck with. You definitely don't want to mess with him. You do not want to cross his path. He's like if Bill Sykes came to the 21st century and simply relocated to America. That's pretty much Harlan in a nutshell. He's like the Bill Sykes. He's like, excuse me, the American Bill Sykes of the 21st century. His presence on screen will definitely make you squirm, especially in the first act, where he gets easily offended by his own girlfriend and stuffs an entire hot dog in her mouth. I thought... Whoa, my God, and beats up another passerby? Oh, my goodness. You know, if I were there, I would have done what Thelma and Louise did. Shoot the tires off his car. But even then, I would know better. But it's easy to say that, yes, Harlan is such a bastard. He is such a prick to everyone whether it's Russell, whether it's Rodney, whether it's John, you name it. This guy is definitely a huge asshole. Oh my god. 
but he's absolutely a fascinating villain as well. And his climax with Russell, I definitely felt was just well done. Now, Lena, let's just say that she's pretty much a looker. She's a pretty good character, but she's not always on screen a lot. She's pretty loyal to Russell, but other than that, she doesn't really get a lot of screen time. She pretty much feels like a throwaway character, but I do love the moments when she's with Russell together. I thought they were just very touching and just very sweet, and she herself is a pretty sweet character as well. So yes, the characters in this film were all engaging, and Harlan takes the cake for being such a magnificent bastard. Now, let's go to the acting. It's no secret that Christian Bale is fantastic as an actor, and he's also a human chameleon. Let's face it. He's gained a lot of weight for American Hustle, and here he's lost a lot of weight and built some muscle to look very suave and very badass looking for such a role like Russell. I thought he was very handsome, and he acted very well. Come on. Christian Bale is absolutely fantastic as an actor. He doesn't really surprise me because I've seen a lot of films with Christian Bale, and I felt that every one of them was absolutely fantastic because of him. It's definitely no secret that Christian Bale is such a fantastic actor. Woody Harrelson as the main antagonist was just spine-chilling. Every piece of dialogue that he says, every motion he makes, every glare that he has, especially with those signs of fuck you written on his hands like that, I just was, wow, just, whoa. I was pretty intimidated by Harrelson's presence on screen. I was just, wow, overall. Then we have Casey Affleck as the more rambunctious and younger brother, Rodney. I thought he was just excellent. Sure, there were times where I thought his screaming at Christian Bale's face was unintentionally hilarious, even though it was supposed to be a serious moment. But other than that, it was well acted all throughout. He was able to be a total foil to Christian Bale's solemn yet very serious nature. And then we have a very rambunctious, troubled, and quite an anger management type of person in Rodney. And I thought that Casey Affleck did it very well. Zoe Saldana, oh my goodness. What a sexy, sexy woman she is. She was an avatar voicing one of the blue cat-like humanoid creatures. She is a very sexy lady. And I definitely love her portrayal as Lena. She was not just sexy, oh, more than that, but she was able to, she was simply able to convey all of the emotions, whether it's sadness or frustration or anger. I was so moved by her performance. Sure, her role was very small, but other than that, she did a magnificent job at portraying such a character like Lena. She was wonderful all throughout. Forrest Whitaker as the sheriff I thought was absolutely fantastic. He was able to bring in such a dignified presence on screen, yet also have this rough-sounding bass baritone voice, which I absolutely love to hear. He was able to make the best out of the role of the sheriff. And then we have Sam Shepard as the uncle. I definitely really loved his performance. And sure, his role is also quite minute as well. But it was a fantastic portrayal. 
Willem Dafoe as John Petty, I thought was absolutely fantastic. In fact, the entirety of the film's acting was all fantastic. It was stellar all around. The true standouts were, of course, Christian Bale, Casey Affleck, Woody Harrelson, Forrest Whitaker, Willem Dafoe, and Zoe Zaldana. Bravo to all of you. Then we have the music of this film. I have to say that it's actually quite minimalist. The music of this film I thought was very appropriate to the overall feel of this film. A dark yet very gritty tale of um, murder, of simply put low class life in general in the USA. And with such great use of the guitars and some rock songs and a few country songs here and there, I definitely felt that the music served its purpose very well. I especially loved the ending credit song. It was just so moving and so powerful. And the name of that ending credit song is, let me scroll down here. Ah, here we have it. Pearl, it was by Pearl Jam, and it was called Release. Yeah, I definitely loved that song. It was just so powerful. It was just so beautiful. It was just magnificent. I was almost in tears when hearing this song. That's how much it touched me in the heart. It was just wow. Wow all throughout. So overall, it was just fantastic. But unfortunately, this film bombed at the box office. With a budget of $22 million, it ended up breaking $11 million domestically. But why? It was such a fantastic film! Well, as I found out, it was because of some of the controversies that this film had. Most notably, the natives of New Jersey. A lot of people from New Jersey basically cried foul of this film, of how they portrayed their characters, especially the ones who were called the inbred ones. A lot of people who were from New Jersey basically cried foul because of the portrayal of certain characters, especially that of the main villain. And that's pretty much why it ended up sucking at the box office. But other than that, I'm sure that in a few years' time, this will become a cult classic. And I'm actually quite sad that this didn't make it in the Academy Awards, but there's still hope for this film to gain some accolades. So with that said, I give this film a 4.5 out of 5 stars. This is totally worth your time. Sure, at times the writing, like I said, can be a bit clunky, and at times the character relationships can be a little bit more fleshed out. But what you get is a very engaging thriller film. It's more than just your standard bare-knuckle brawling a la Fight Club film. It's more than just that. It's very engaging. The situations that the characters get themselves into are very intriguing. And there's always something that will leave you on the edge of your seat. Whether it's a death scene or if it's something that's very touching. There's no doubt that you will definitely get a kick out of this film. Heck, it's still playing in theaters, so go ahead and check it out if you haven't done so already. And if the DVD is out, by all means, go ahead and purchase it. And if it's, on, if it's streaming online, then go ahead and watch it. You will not be disappointed, especially when you have an actor like Christian Bale doing his thing fantastically as possible, especially when you have Casey Affleck voicing his, doing his young, younger brother. I thought both of these guys were absolutely fantastic. And like I said, go check it out. You will not be disappointed. Well, 
That's all for now. Be sure to tune into my next review, which is going to be tomorrow, where I review her, starring Joaquin Phoenix, Amy Adams, Scarlett Johansson, and Rooney Mara. Until then, this is Antonio signing off and wishing you all a good night, and I hope you all have a happy Sunday.